You want the best i3 12100F PC build for gaming, but what's the best memory, motherboards, and graphics card for your build? Don't worry, you've come to the right place. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now the last year and a half has been brutal on budget builders looking for the best, cheapest gaming PC build 2022. But finally there's something to celebrate with GPU prices going down to MSRP and below and the i3-12100F which is the king of budget gaming. Now for only about $550 to $700 you can put together the best cheapest gaming PC build that plays any game at great FPS in 1080p and mini games at 1440p. So today we'll go over exactly what you need and take our build head to head against the i5-12400 build to see if this is in fact the best budget gaming PC build. If you get value out of the video, please give it a like because it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. The i3-12100F and the i3-12100 are Intel's 12th gen, four core, eight thread budget CPUs and they're currently selling at the time of this video for $129 for the i3-12100 and $100 for the i3-12100F. The i3-12100 and i3-12100F are locked parts, meaning they can't be overclocked, so it doesn't need an expensive motherboard to get the most out of it. And unlike the i5-12600K, the i3-12100F only has performance cores and no efficiency cores. At stock it runs at a TDP of only 58 watts, though those power limits can be removed and in fact many motherboards do this out of the box. Although performance difference, it's only about 2%. More on this when we discuss the best motherboard for the i3-12100F. So should you get the i3-12100F or spend an extra 30 bucks to get the i3-12100? The only difference is that the FCPU does not have an integrated GPU. Now note that the integrated GPU on the i3-12100 it's really only strong enough for regular office type work and not gaming. So if you want to build a PC without a GPU for gaming, then the Ryzen 5600G or 5700G are really the only choices, not the i3-12100. While the integrated graphics can utilize Intel's QuickSync technology when doing video editing, the additional $30 cost doesn't really seem worth it. And if you're really doing productivity work, I'd recommend jumping up to an i5-12400 or i5-12600K instead. So if you're primarily gaming on a budget, then the cheaper i3-12100F is the way to go. But what about performance? The i3-12100F PC build performance, it's quite impressive. And it's a huge jump from the 10th gen i3-10100. In productivity workloads, it trades blows with the 6 core 12 thread i5-11400. That's pretty amazing as the i3-12100F has two fewer CPU cores. Though again, if creative workloads are your main purpose, this isn't the CPU for you. In gaming, the i3-12100F blows away the competition from Intel's older i5-10400 and i5-11400 as well as the $159 Ryzen 5500 coming in a solid 5% ahead of all of them. Versus the Ryzen 5600 and i5-12400, the i3-12100F only trails by about 10% using an ultra high-end GPU like the RTX 3090. So expect roughly equal gaming performance using anything mid-tier or slower. At just $100, it's absolutely the budget gaming king. So what's the best GPU to combo with our i3-12100F PC build? Now the good news is that as I'm filming this, GPU prices continue to fall with several near their MSRP and even below. The bad news? It's that to find a good GPU in the sub $200 category, you're going to need to dip into used GPUs from last generation. Though both the used and new GPU markets continue a steep decline in price. Check out our most recent GPU market update video for the latest pricing. Let's start off at the low end and we'll work our way up. Now here you're going to want to target a used GPU until the market changes. Check out the links in the video description for current GPU pricing of the GPUs that I'm recommending. Using our GPU value spreadsheet and targeting good frame rates at high settings in 1080p on most games, on the used market right now I would check out the RX 570 4GB which is going for about $120. That's down massively from the nearly $400 that card was going for during the height of the GPU shortage. The slightly higher performance GCX 1650 Super, not the regular 1650, you'll want to avoid that card, can be found for around $180. Or the slightly higher performance RX 580 for about $150 to $180. My used recommendation right now is an 8GB RX 580 which is now going on eBay 
in the US for just $160 used. Going up in performance, I now look at the new GPU market. I'd avoid the RX 6500 XT. It's a terribly designed GPU with too many compromises, even though we are using PCIe Gen 4, which does cover up some, but not all of its failings. But there's just better alternatives out there. The best value right now continues to be the AMD Radeon RX 6600, which can be picked up for right around $290 and is a substantial upgrade over any of the GPUs we've discussed. The best value NVIDIA GPU is either the RTX 3050 for a ridiculous $329 at the time of filming, or the older RTX 2060, which actually outperforms the 3050, and which has recently seen its price sink back towards $300. But again, the RX 6600 is similarly priced and has nearly 30% more performance, including being able to play a lot of games at 1440p. So that's my strong recommendation. Climbing into the 1440p class of GPUs, you can consider the RX 6600 XT for about $360, the GPU that we're gonna be using in our build today, or the RTX 3060, which does provide comparable performance to the 6600 XT, but for about $400. The biggest GPU I would use in an i3-12100F PC build before considering upgrading the CPU is the Radeon RX 6700 XT or the RTX 3060 Ti, both very capable 1440p GPUs. Anything bigger than that, and I'd wanna upgrade the CPU to at least an i5-12400 or Ryzen 5600. So what's the best memory for the i3-12100F? Well, given current RAM pricing, this is really easy. You want a two by eight gigabyte kit of DDR4-3200 CL16, which right now is going for as low as $49. For our build, I picked up a Silicon Power ARGB kit for only $10 more, just to add a little bling. Check out the links in the video description for my recommendations and pricing. But what about using faster memory? Well, we aren't using a fast enough GPU to get any benefit out of faster memory. And even if we could get a couple percent, it would make more sense to spend that money upgrading the GPU or the CPU to the next tier, given there's about a $25 to $40 price difference between 3200CL16 and 3600CL16 memory for 16 gigabyte kits. Let's also remember that for gaming, 16 gigabytes, it's all we need. No reason to waste another 50 to 60 bucks getting 32 gigabytes when that could have upgraded our GPU or CPU instead. So what's the best motherboard for the i3-12100F? Well, your choices are basically a budget tier B660 motherboard or a more cut down H610 motherboard. Now the H610, it's got weaker features, it limits memory speed to 3200, but it does allow the use of XMP profiles, which is great because 3200 speed is as fast as we're gonna buy anyway. Now H610, it doesn't give us PCIe Gen 4 storage, but that doesn't really affect us as we don't need it for the best, cheapest budget gaming PC build. But it does give us PCIe Gen 4 at the main graphics card slot. So we're gonna be good if we upgrade the GPU anytime in the next couple of generations. The H610 board I picked up was the ASUS Prime H610M-A for $99 mostly because it actually has a VRM heatsink. But given the cheapest B660 motherboards have come down in price, I also picked up the Gigabyte B660M DS3H for just $10 more at $109. If it's only about 10 or 20 bucks in price difference, I would strongly consider the B660. Now check out the links in the video description for current pricing and my recommendations. Just remember that while the budget B660 motherboards are fine for the low TDP i3-12100, if you do change your mind and you go with an i5-12400 CPU instead, a lot of the low cost B660s did struggle to run it at the full frequency. So check out our best i5-12400 gaming PC build video for more if you do decide to up the CPU. What about the best cooler for our i3-12100F PC build, which does come with included box cooler? Now there's great news here. This little box cooler is totally sufficient for the i3-12100F PC build and should only be replaced if for some reason it seems to be running too loud for your taste. If you do decide to change out the cooler, check out the newly released id Cooling SE214 XT. It's a Slim Tower ARGB cooler for only $20 and that comes with the LGA 1700 mounting bracket included. If you do go with another cooler, just make sure you can get the LGA 1700 mounting bracket you'll need for the new Intel socket. Now, personally, I'd start off with a box cooler and see where that gets you before committing any more money here. 
let's talk budget PC cases for our i3-12100 PC build. Now, unfortunately, the PC case market, it continues to be a little bonkers with ultra budget cases that used to cost $25 going for nearly double that price. What we're looking for at a minimum is a decent airflow case with at least one intake and one exhaust fan. Remember, a lot of budget cases don't come with more than one fan. So if you do need more, any PWM 120 millimeter fan is fine and you can pick up a lot of them for about eight to $10 each or even less. Now, my choices right now in the US case market is the Zalman S2 or S3 with tempered glass. Don't get the acrylic one if the glass panel is available for about the same price. These come in at $62 from Amazon with three included fans, though two are Molex, a PSU shroud, top mesh, and a good enough build quality. Other cases on the ultra budget side include the Thermaltake Versa H18 for $55. This will need a second fan the Zalman T7 with two included fans for $55, or something like the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L for $49, which also needs an included fan. Check out the links in the video description for more case deals. What about the best stores for our i3-12100F PC build? Well, we just want cheap and good enough. Thankfully, NVMe PCIe Gen 3 storage has never been cheaper. So I simply selected the cheapest 500 gigabyte NVMe which at the time of filming was this Kingston NV1 for just $41. Now I'll leave a list of a couple 500 gigabyte NVMe drives in the video description that often take turns being the cheapest. So click the links for the current pricing. I would avoid if possible SATA SSDs as even if they are a dollar or two cheaper, the faster NVMe drives just make more sense and there's no cable management to deal with. For the PSU, we just want the cheapest unit we can find that's at least C tier rated on the PSU cultist list, which I'm gonna leave linked down in the video description. Now, of course, it's likely we'll only need 450 to 550 watts, given how power efficient this system is. For our i3 12100F PC build, I found the ASUS Tough Gaming 450 watt PSU, it's B tier rated for only $43. I'll leave a list with links to good value PSUs down in the video description and unless you're getting a higher end GPU like an RX 6700 XT or RTX 3060 Ti, I would just get the cheapest one. For the bigger GPUs, I would probably come up to 550 watts of total system power. Of course, if you're not sure how to size your PSU properly, check out our PSU buying guide video for more information. All right, let's roll the music and build our i3-12100F gaming PC build. <laughs> So final thoughts on the build, absolute great performer, the i3-12100F currently selling right now for $99 paired with a B660 board like the Gigabyte DS3H B660CM. Really, really great package and it turned out to be a really good performer all the way up to an RX 6600 XT or an RTX 3060. Remember, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you're wondering about the current GPU price and what the best GPU to buy for this PC is right now this month, check out our monthly GPU update series. We go over the best new and used GPUs at every price point so you can figure out what's the best GPU for you in 2022. And we'll catch you on the next one.